Today I'm going to talk about adjusting tube curves to different screen voltages. There are a couple ways of going about that and this one I'm going to give you some caution about how to do that because you need to adjust the plate curves different from the screen curves. Uh, that's going to be a, a key takeaway. You can go to the Radio Designer's Handbook as I did, Revision 4, pages 36 and 37, and F. Langford Smith uh, tells you in technical details that the plate current is equal to a factor. Uh, in this case, the letter A, it could be a letter K or something, but a factor times the quantity of the plate voltage minus the amplification voltage times the grid uh, voltage and that's raised to the X power. Now X represents three halves. He said 1.5 but do look at other references this is always three halves. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into it here. And he says that relationship is true if this part of the curve is mostly flat. Well okay what if it's more like this. This isn't mostly flat anything. This is mostly inclined. Well, the methodology I'm going to show you today will work for that as well. But then he goes into the relationships between uh, power and voltage and current and gets into mutual conductance and plate resistance and so on and so forth. And then he pops out this nomograph and he says if you have voltage conversion factor here and the conversion factors for like based on GM or a few other things you can use a curve here put some input numbers in and get a point out a point for screen voltage or a point for the uh, or screen current or, or plate current you go I need a bunch of points I want a curve here I don't want a point Point's good if you're at the bias point. I want. I just want to see the curve. Okay, how do you do that? Well, after he frustrates you to death and he worked a problem out, and you can say, "Okay, I get it, Fritz. Uh, I need. I need. I need some more help here." He goes. However, greater accuracy. He admits after going through all the technical details, he admits there's greater accuracy in the use of conversion factors over a wide range of screen voltages may be obtained if the curves are available for the zero bias point for a number of screen voltages like 400, 350, 300, 250, so on and so forth. You have this. Okay? We're going to use this to come up with how to re-ratio the plate and screen current charts. Here's a 250. The screen's 250. Here are the grid lines. Now, I only, for the 6L6, it only goes down to minus 40 because that 250 screen voltage, uh, minus 60 is essentially zero. It's it's down here hugging the, you know, axis line. It's it's zero. At 400, you, it goes down to minus 60. When I'm putting together this program for different tubes, I try to find this chart with the largest screen voltage because it has a lot more detail, a lot more granularity. It's easier to digitize this. And then what I do is uh, I look at this in order to come up with new ratios. Typically what they would do is if I had a 350, again it's X is the Y is B is the what. It's just a simple ratio thing. Um, current is a 400 as 350 is some other current, uh, what is the new current value? But they have this, and what this represents are the zero lines that he talked about. I want to point something out here. These lines don't necessarily match the other lines. Let me point that out. This 400 line, it comes up to here about 350 is where it plays out. If I go back here, it plays out about 350. If I go here to the 250, it plays out just at or slightly above 200 milliamps. Go back to the 250, it plays out slightly under 200 milliamps. It's how they came up with it. Uh, they have machines they could put, uh, plug the tube into, 
and then this would go into this uh, machine that would then s send uh, voltages into an oscilloscope and then an oscilloscope would actually paint the lines you see on screen and then some lab tech would look at all those with this trusty pen and start recording eyeballing each of the you know where he thinks the each of the grid uh, markers are on on screen and wrote down the voltage and milliamps best guess uh, we're dealing with vacuum tubes and everything is plus or minus 20 percent anyway uh, it's not an exacting science uh, then it's still not so I just want to point that out. So what do you do with this? Well, my methodology is based on what uh, F. Langford Smith said to do, is I'm going to take points. I'm going to uh, relate 50 to the current value at this point, 100 to this point, so on and so forth, until I get this current value related to 400. And I'm going to plot that in Excel. And when I plot it in Excel, I get this equation. I put the R squared value on there just because you can. Now then, if you only have two points, use a linear regression. If you have more than two points, use a polynomial, but don't get weird. Two is fine. A, a or, an, an order number of two is sufficient. If you go to three, it could get weird. It could actually make an S shape, and you don't want that because it's, it's a little bit more linear than that. Uh, so this is what I do. And then what happens with that is, on the spreadsheet, here's that curve, I can then calculate one value that's based on 400, always. And I uh, calculate with the equation, if this screen voltage was 400, I calculate based on the screen voltage I, I want to design for, and when you divide these out, in this case, the ratio is 1. What I do with this ratio, I have on my spreadsheet uh, the current uh, plate current values at 400 volts. So this is the plate current at 400 volts screen. This is the, the voltage along the x-axis that relates to that. So I take these values times that ratio. In this case, um, it's, it's different. But wherever that ratio is will give me a new ratio number. I plot this new current value for the new screen voltage against the voltage along the x-axis. I can do the same thing with the screen as well. It's different. So here's your screen at 250. And then they also show the 400, the 350, 300, so on and so forth. We're going to plot those points. But let's go back to the first one again. The, the distance between these two these points are approximately the same. They get gradually a little longer in between. This one most pronounced. In this case, there are significant, there are significant jumps in the gap in between the voltage aligns, and that's going to make for a different curve. In this case, Here's the equation that you use to adjust and find a new ratio value for a screen current uh, versus the plate current. That the slopes are different, the equations are different. Um, let me show you uh, on screen. So if, if both of them are at 400, the ratio is 1. You could use either ratio for either plate or screen, and, and nothing happens. It, it's fine. But let me redo the screen. Uh, design for 250. It drops. Now that 250 on this curve, I've adjusted slightly under 200 because that's just the way that curve worked and the, and the math worked. Let's go back to the ratio. The ratio is 0.53 for the plate curves. For the screen curves, it's going to be 0.43. You're going, well, it's close. It's close. You know, maybe you could use one for the other. I wouldn't do that because it, the problem becomes worse as I go, let's say it's dropped down to 100. Now it's dropped way down, and I go back and look at the ratios. If I were to use the plate ratio for the screen curves, they would be twice too big than what they should. If I use the screen current, uh, screen ratio for the plate, they'd only be half of what they should be. You would have a mess. And that's not what we want. So, 
that's what I do. I take my data points as I've shown, I regress, and I, I come up with two different equations. From the equations, I calculate, here's that new uh, screen voltage at 100, here's those values, here's the values that they should be if they were at 400, here's the ratio, you simply divide this by that to get this, and when you do that, then that is a ratio you put here to convert it from this plate voltage or screen voltage of 400 and if this were 100 this would be the new value for the 100. So that's it in a nutshell. That's how I did it. That's what F. Langford Smith recommended. It's this simple math made a little easier. If you happen to have an Excel spreadsheet, come to the equations, come up with the ratios. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.